All right. Well, I'm really glad to, to be here and chatting with everyone. Um, and I used this opportunity to think about um, how OpenScapes, uh, OpenScapes, how open science has uh, been spreading in my agency. I'm with NOAA Fisheries and to um, plan for 2023 when we are um, trying to get a, a large, um, a lar much larger NIMPS um, OpenScape Mentors Program. When I say NIMPS, um, talking about acronyms, that is uh, short for National Marine Fisheries Service and is our acronym for NOAA Fisheries, um, which you would never guess. Okay, so uh, next slide. So first thing before I, I start, I should tell you a little bit about me. So just kind of put things in perspective. Um, I'm a research scientist. My major activity is research. Um, I've been at NOAA Fisheries for many years. I am in a leadership uh, position, but a leadership uh, among scientists. I'm not, in, I'm not a supervisor. I'm definitely not up in the, the leadership of NOAA at my center or uh, nationwide. Although I do, as I said, I have a leadership role in, in terms of spreading uh, open science uh, at NOAA Fisheries. I'm definitely an early adopter of open science. And uh, I would say I, uh, yeah, I'm probably the, the, the point person now for these, these efforts uh, across NOAA Fisheries at the moment. Um, I also teach a lot. I teach within NOAA Fisheries and I'm also affiliate faculty at University of Washington and I teach time series analysis. And this latter point is really important because, next slide. Oh, next, uh, sorry, uh, next slide. I actually, I'm gonna go back and forth a little. Ah, okay, never mind. go back, go back, sorry. Okay, great. Um, and this uh, is a really important point uh, that I'm an affiliate faculty because, um, Science ha has changed, and the way that we do statistics has really changed. Um, and open science is very fundamental to that, and it's a very big part of how we teach graduate students. So um, it's something I think a lot about in terms of uh, helping scientific staff at NOAA Fisheries. Next slide. So um, NOAA Fisheries, um, it's a really big agency. And it's divided um, into a science and a policy um, segment. So the policy people come up with policies and our science centers support that. So science centers are really focused on science and I'm at a science center. I'm at Northwest Fishery Science Center uh, over there on the West Coast at, in Seattle. And there are other um, science centers around, around the country. Next slide. And uh, I'm not really gonna talk much about the mentor program, but um, this I am talking about planning for the mentor program. And the, the things to know about this is, yeah, it's coming out of the uh, OpenScapes program that we are involved in in 2021, but it's part of a, a longer trajectory of supporting open science. Um, and you can go to our GitHub page here and, and read about it. But the key thing to note about this, understand about this, and this is gonna be different than the NASA OpenScapes, is that our effort is grassroots. It is coming from below. It is not something that's coming top down. So this is individual scientists who are um, doing this, doing this change because we, we have to. Science has changed, how we do science has changed. Okay, next slide. Okay, so given that it's a grassroots, um, and the question for me was like, okay, what do we, what do we need to do now? So we're pretty well, um, our mentor program is, uh, is, is going well, but the question is of all the many things we could be doing, what should we be doing this year in preparation for the year of open science, which is next year. So next slide. 
So I decided to use this opportunity to think about the, um, the diffusion of innovations theory to help me plan and think about what are the next steps. And I really had two very concrete questions. Where should we be putting our energy? And then secondly, how should we talk to leadership? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to, given the time, I'm just going to talk about the first one. But I did uh, in my slides, I do have some slides on my thinking about the, the next question. Next slide. So um, there's a little cartoon, diffusion of innovation theory. And, and the, the theory, um, uh, so in studying E.M. E, e. Rogers and developing his theory, studying, studying how innovation spreads within um, populations and an organization is, is a population. Um, and it found that it follows this um, predictable pattern of, of how it sp spreads in different types of people um, in the community. So it starts with the innovators. They just kind of have the idea. And, but then the next people who um, take it up are the early adopters. And they are really different. They hear that idea and they're like, whoa, how did I never see this before? So when you were listening to um, Ileana, classic early adopter person, they hear it, they can see the benefit and they're like, wow, mind blown. I am gonna put effort into this. So those are your early adopters and they're really critical in the early part. And then the next uh, group is the early majority, then the late majority. So those are your majority people, and they're they're different, and their their concerns are different. They may be open to it, but they're pretty different than those early adopters. So so there's this um, kind of trajectory that happens. Next slide. And one of the key ideas is that there is this tipping point that when you reach uh, about fifteen percent of the population reached, that the idea um, can really start spreading. And this is coming um, from network theory. Uh, if you look at the spread of anything within networks where you have clustering, um, when you and when it first starts spreading, things just kind of like they don't get beyond the clusters. But then once you have enough penetration and you get connections across clusters, ideas just spread. So that's a, this tipping point idea. Next slide. So the message from this is really critical to really reach those early adopters and get really good penetration in that early adopter population. That is absolutely essential to reach them before you start working at reaching the next group. Next slide. So what are the characteristics of these early adopters? I mean, I think you just listened to what Ileana was saying, how she described it, man, they hear the idea, wow, they, they, they can go with it. Um, so that's really great and they have lots of energy, but there's some big challenges. They're isolated and often that they're actually not in leadership positions because of the nature of their personalities. <laughs> actually, it's kind of interesting, they're just not the sort of people who might be really high up in leadership. That was really interesting for me to discover in reading this theory. So next slide. Okay, just jump this. So it's really important to kind of figure out where you're at. And I did thinking about this, I would say we're in the early, early, early part of the early adopters. So next slide. So question, where should we put our energy? And that is gotta be for 2022 is identifying, supporting and developing these early adopters. Next slide. Um, so, okay, so think about these science centers. Next slide, I'm gonna wrap it up soon, Julie. Okay, next slide. So this is the situation that we have is that, whoop, nope, nope, previous one. So, this is, so imagine these circles are science centers and we have these people who are early adopters and they're really hard to reach. And within a federal agency, it's not like I have any ability to contact these people. I mean, I, I literally have no way to communicate across science centers. There's just something that is not possible. Like maybe from the top, but this is happening grassroots and it just can't happen. And so, so the key thing is figuring out how to break down, um, 
how to get the communication lines. I think for us, for the grassroots, that's really important. And I'm going to just quickly go through the last three slides, Julie. Talk just that's fine. a little bit about this. Go ahead. Next slide. You can, yeah, take a little time. That's fine. Okay. Next slide. So, um, so those communication lines are really important. Yeah, that this is a good slide to be on. And for a long time, like we we're just completely siloed. Um, we could not. I could. I. I just can't communicate. Even though I teach a lot in this in the agency, I just don't. There's no way for me to communicate across cross centers. There's no way for me to find the even the R users. I'm a R programmer and I teach R, but it's just no way. Um, but there are two. There are some things that happened that changed that. And one was um, there was a, a stock assessment group, and they began um, working together across science centers, and they developed an email list. And that had connections across centers of people who were doing open source programming. And it just was happened to be what was important to this stock assessment group. I was tied into that initiative about these are this, it's kind of unrelated, but it's this toolbox initiative. But the thing was there was an email list and that was the first time I had ability to begin getting into these isolated communities. And then in 2021, I was able to leverage that email list. And once I was able to get into these isolated clusters, getting my training out to people, and then that started piling on, then it became um, in the, the OpenScapes was totally related to that, um, in that the fall, we were able for the first time to get a cohort across the centers. So like breaking down these, these clusterings is actually, it's a really hard thing to do. And um, so the fall happened and then this is kind of really interesting. I realized when I track this back, um, the really another huge change happened when Julie made a GitHub org for NASA OpenScapes and it was public. And I'm really deep into GitHub and I was into uh, OpenScapes and I discovered what she had made. And I like, I read every bit of that. And I, and I read that and that was the moment I realized, whoa, this is a game changer because now I have something to point to, to my upper leadership. And I can say, hey, NASA's doing this and they were doing it top down. So that was just like, oh, bonanza. And that, that was like that moment. And this gives you a concrete example of how like sharing something, opening up the community, sharing what you're creating allows others to grab that and to like just build on it. And so that, um, Discovering, so Julie making just that GitHub org and then them, which means people putting their stuff out in the open. So the, the NASA mentor, NASA mentors putting their stuff out in the open and making that discoverable then allowed us to organize in our uh, agency um, across centers and say, hey, we can sort of leverage that and begin developing our own mentor program. All right, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs>